Hello everyone, I am Dr. Rupa Wong and I'm coming to you from Hawaii. Today I'm not talking about eyes or eye surgery or any of that. Instead, I'm addressing questions that I always get about being part of an interracial relationship and having interracial kids. So if that interests you, stick around. So I get a lot of questions about being one half of an interracial relationship. And honestly, whenever I get them, at first I was a little confused because I don't really even consider myself as part of an interracial relationship. My husband is Chinese American, fourth or fifth generation. I am second generation Indian American. And I don't know if it's because I'm Asian, which might be part of it, South Asian and he's East Asian. But I think more of it comes from the fact that I live in Hawaii. And here in Hawaii, about a quarter of the people are mixed race or hapa, like half. Half this, half that, quarter this, quarter that. So we live here in Hawaii and all our kids were born here in Hawaii and that's just the norm. Everybody is mixed race or a large percentage of the population is mixed race. Almost 40% of people marry someone outside of their race here in Hawaii. So our family is blended and looks just like everybody else's family. So I don't ever really consider it when I get these questions, especially from people from the mainland, wondering how we navigate the different cultures. It makes me stop and think a little bit because I have to remember how it is in the rest of the country. But I wanted to give you a little bit of a background as to our story and how we have navigated some of the hurdles of being in an intercultural relationship. So these are photographs that I had framed for our wedding over 11 years ago. And I really wanted to celebrate both the Chinese and Indian heritages that we had. And that's what we do on a daily basis too with our children. We're in Hawaii, so there actually is a very small Indian population, but we still make the most of it and try to make sure that our children understand where they come from. So this is my husband's father and mother and my husband looks exactly like his dad they were married i think this is in philadelphia in the 60s my husband's family was here since the late 1800s and my mother-in-law's family came shortly thereafter so they've been in hawaii for generations i was actually struck when i met my husband i'm used to having chinese american friends but all of their parents are chinese immigrants and i was not used to an American accent in someone of my mother-in-law's generation because that's so different from me growing up on the East Coast, but it's such the norm here in Hawaii. And then these are my parents and they had a very traditional Hindu Brahmin wedding ceremony in Madras, India, which is now called Chennai. Um, my mother is a physician and my father's an engineer, very typical Indian professions. My father-in-law was actually a physician as well. So they had a very traditional a relationship except for the fact that they had what's called a love marriage. My parents were not an arranged marriage. They had met through family friends and then got married a few years later, right before my mother graduated from medical school. So that was a little bit unusual at the time in the 70s. My parents were married in 1972. A lot of the marriages back then were arranged marriages or kind of matchmaking and, and that was not the case for them. But it was fine for their families because they were the same cast and same subcast and all of that, which is really different nowadays, especially if you live here in America. And then on this side is my parents, uh, my grandparents, my mother's family, uh, my grandmother and my grandfather. So this was taken, I think probably like 1948, 1949. Uh, and my grandfather was a police detective and my grandmother was a stay at home mom and very traditional South Indian family at the time. These are my husband's grandparents, so I have both sides. This is from my mother's side, very Chinese family, also immigrated a couple generations prior to my mother-in-law, and then this is my father-in-law's parents. Their family was, they were business people originally in China in the late 1800s and immigrated here. So they come from a while ago from the mainland China, but we still have these customs that we try to incorporate with the children. And this is really nice for the children to see because they can see where they came from, which I think is such an important thing in mixed families and just in America in general. That's the story of being an American. Okay. So when we got married, Hi, my name is Maria. 
takeover time again. <laughs> when we got married, I think like any interfaith, interracial, intercultural relationship, there's always trying to navigate between the two different cultures, especially when each one has a lot of strong customs. So we really wanted to include the Chinese side as well as the Indian side. Oh, yes, you would like to show them our picture there, family picture. This is me <laughs> sleeping and I didn't even smile. This is Todd wearing Crocs. This is Nick Hill and this is Daddy and this is Mama. That's right. And even though Ta our Nick Hill looks a little funny, I look really good for having given birth. So I, I that was our Christmas bad, picture. <laughs> so we had, did you know what we had for our wedding? We had a Chinese tea pouring ceremony, then we had an Indian ceremony, and then an Indian lunch, and then we had and then we had the Christian wedding ceremony, and then a dinner with the Chinese lion dance. And here's Yeah, but this is the this is when we got married. And then that one is Tata. He was crying. Why did he cry? Daddy will probably cry when you get married too. It's very hard. It gets sad. And then that's our whole family. It is our whole family. That's that says Popo. Oh yes, and this the is the whole and the Dows, the Tommies, mm -hmm. the Kardimoto. And everybody, you know what? And this is pretty neat with this picture. This is all daddy's sisters, right? Daddy, everybody is mixed in this. There's hardly anyone that's full, any kind of ethnicity. You know who's in this picture? Who's this picture? <gasps> daddy's side and mommy's side. That's right. That's Popo and Patti, right? Oh, and they both start with a P. Both start with a P and they get along so well. Isn't that, I love that picture. That's my favorite picture, right? And here's the little Chindian babies. Oops, this is a stranger. It's not a stranger, that's Patti. She just looks young. And this is mommy, this is the Indian. Do you wanna have an Indian wedding? Wear a red sari like this? You can do both. You can wear a beautiful red sari oh, with what gold. About daddy? Daddy is, is at my feet putting on a ring on my toes. What? But that's what they do in South India. That's how, oh, so instead of a ring on your finger, yep. And then daddy gets you on his hands and he's... In Hawaii, there's not a very large Indian population. There's a large Chinese population. And my husband is from Hawaii, which is how we ended up here. We met in residency in New York. And we were both a little apprehensive. We both dated many people outside of our own race or culture. My parents have always been fine with all of my boyfriends, so I knew that wasn't going to be an issue. I was a little concerned about how I would be received with my in-laws, my mother-in-law, and it was completely fine. I think really it came down to our parents just wanted us to be happy and wanted us to find the right person that fit for their child, and that's each other. So the issue of being different races or different cultures or different faiths was not so much of a problem with our parents and they were really interested in celebrating our wedding in that way. When we had our Indian ceremony at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel, my husband's, all of their family, the aunts, uncles, cousins, they got Indian clothes from everywhere. I had Indian clothes made for my sister-in-laws, but the rest of the family all dressed up too. They borrowed them from other people and it was such a nice show of respect and it just made me feel really welcomed into the family. And then I think my parents did the same thing when we did the Chinese tea pouring ceremony and the, China, the lion dance. There were so many really unique aspects to our wedding, which I think blended everything together. And we try to do that on a daily basis now. So even though there's no Indian temple here or there aren't that many Indian cultural events, whenever there is an opportunity for us to celebrate the Indian culture, we take advantage of it. And we try to show at least our children what their culture means from both sides, the Chinese and the Indian side. And hopefully when they get married, they just find someone that they connect with that's going to treat them well. And that's what's important to us and not so much their race or their culture. And I think that's really the norm here in Hawaii. And I think that's why it's such an easy place for us to live. And it's the most accepted place I've ever felt out of living in North Carolina, New York, Boston. This is the easiest place I've ever been to, even though there aren't many people that are exactly of the same race and culture as me, but just because everyone's so accepted. Do you know what about your culture? What's your culture? 
what are chips? Are you Indian? Are you Chinese? Are you Japanese? What does that mean? Oh, well, I am a cooker and I build Legos and I'm half Indian and half Chinese. Yeah? And... What kind of Indian things do you do? Well, I know I just speak Tamil, only one word, but that is inappropriate. Okay, so you... you <laughs> Okay, great. I'm glad I'm teaching you some great Tamil there. You know Chinese? You know Chinese? What do you know in Chinese? Um, what kind of... Oh. But my name is Raya. <laughs> of course you always know that. Taji, can you come here? You know a little bit more about being Chinese and Indian. What does that mean to you? Um, do you feel different from the other kids in your class or same, same? Same, same. You don't feel any different from them. Do you know that you're half Indian? Yeah. And then what's the other half? Chinese. What do you think about that? Um, I like it. <laughs> That's good. Do you know if anyone else is Chinese in your class or Indian? Or you're not really sure? Um, well, some people in my class are in, I mean, Chinese because um, Benjamin is the Taiwanese. You know that he's Taiwanese. Chinese Taiwanese. Well, I find it's, you know, it's really interesting. There's this psychologist here in Hawaii, and she wrote an article saying that Hawaii kids are the worst at figuring out what kind of race another person is. But I think that's kind of a good thing. That means, Why? well, on the mainland, you get so used to being able to say, oh, that person's Chinese, and that person's Japanese, or that person's Indian, or that person's Caucasian. But in Hawaii, everybody is kind of little of everything, right? You don't really know who's who, or who's what. Like, do you think your friends know you're half Indian? You think so? Oh, because I come to school. So at any opportunity I can, I'll try to get into the classroom and teach them about Diwali or the celebration of Holi or whatever Indian holidays and cultural significance activities that I can do to just bring it into the classroom so that, and I, I, I kind of forgot about it, but they obviously remember, which is cool. So I think you can do these things on a micro level wherever you are in the country, even if there aren't people of your same nationality to be able to hold on to a bit of your culture. But it's never been, for me, about maintaining a strict Indian identity. I was obviously born in, in the US. I'm you know, not from India, I've been there three times. I want them to have some knowledge of their Indian culture, but more important is that they just grow up to be good kids and have good values. Should we ask Nikhil some of these questions? Are they tough? Okay, let's go find Nikki. Tell me about being Chinese and Indian. Well... I don't know, but um, it's kind of just um, there's two different religions, and sometimes you like, you know, I kind of want to choose one. But oh, mm -hmm. but what about the cultural part? The cultural? Like the, you know, cultural would be yeah, it's, food uh, and dress and language. Language, uh, um, I, I, I'm not disturbed by it, but... That's good. <laughs> do you remember there was a time, so I wanted to do the holy celebration at your school, but you were a little nervous and you thought people would think it was weird? Yeah. Do you remember saying that? Why'd you say that? I don't know. No, oh, that's... I just, uh, I don't know. Is it hard to be half Indian? Well, it's kind of, um, like, not normal. It's not normal? Yeah, because there's not a lot of Indian, like, kids. But if someone just meets you, do you think they know that you're half Indian? Not really. Not really. Has it been hard for you to have an Indian first name? 
That's why I named all of you well, kids with an Indian first name because you well, have a Chinese last name. Everybody thinks my name is like pronounced a different way, like Keel. Mm. Well, I hate um, that. Yeah, so they don't really know it's Indian. No. Okay. Do you like Indian food? You yes. do like, yeah. He's the one. You really like Indian food. You would eat it all the time if I cooked it, which is nice. Well, I like. I like eating Indian food because you can eat with your hands. I know, you do like to eat with your hands, so that is the one time you can eat with your hands. Is it pretty easy, you think, being here in Hawaii? Yeah, Growing up here? Because it's like pretty diverse and no, no one really like cares. You don't, you don't think anyone really cares? Yeah. What about you? You're shaking your head. Has anyone, well you have, your name is easier. Taj, did you know Taj is also the name of a surfer? What? Yeah, so when Daddy and I were thinking of names, we thought, oh, Taj is a neat name because it means crown, and it's in and Sanskrit, Taj and Taj Mahal. You may notice I don't have any more cushions on my couch because they're all over there for a pillow fort, which is what happens with three kids. And anyway, that was just a little impromptu interview with my kids being Chindians, that's what we call them, Chinese Indians, and part of you know mixed race, interfaith, intercultural, marriage and what it's like for them because I think that's the most important part of it is to ask the children what it's like. So if you have follow-up questions that you want to know about our marriage, our wedding, how we raise our children, comment below because I'd love to do a follow-up interview too but I'd love to know what you guys want to know about our family and so please subscribe to our channel and like this video and comment so I know what it is you're interested in learning more about the Wongs. Thank you and mahalo for watching.